Hello, everybody. Welcome to Late Night Football. Welcome to our match reaction show. It's finished. Liverpool 2, Everton 0. And uh, as I said, Reds are back. I think, you know, if you look at that score line, you might think, ah, it's Everton. It's a relegation team. It's, uh, you know, a relegation threatened team. It's Liverpool. Uh, maybe it was, you know, a, a 2 0 sort of default win. But I actually thought it was more than that. I, th I thought Liverpool looked like they were back to their best today. And I think there was a lot of factors there as well. I think the fact that they didn't play for nine days helped them. They didn't, you know, they got that rest that they needed to get, uh, you know, ahead of a game like this. So that helped. I think they looked a lot more energetic today. But I think the tactics were really spot on. Maybe Everton probably invited a bit of pressure playing a mid, a flat five, the way that they play. Uh, maybe they could have played 4-3-3, maybe might have worked better. But I thought um, the way that Everton, uh, the way that Liverpool played today, it reminded me of how Liverpool have been playing under club. I've always said this, I City a, a team that kills you, with, like, you know, death with a thousand, that, that, you know, believes in death by a thousand cuts. So, you know, they find ways to, uh, it's more pain, it's more pain to watch them doing what they do because they just you know go up you know systematically method methodically liverpool are more like a bazooka they just run in and just ram ram everything you know in their side and that's i think what we saw today the first the two goals they scored was so good in the execution of that counter-attack of that real uh you know panache and that that energy that they have um but even beyond that the way that they were playing today their pressing was on point um they, the energy that they showed i thought it all worked out to plan and, and, and maybe it's because of the break maybe but also, I think maybe Klopp has, has found found an adjustment in his techniques and tactics uh, that, that he might use as a game plan going forward. We'll talk about that, though. Let's talk about two goals. So, I mean, Everton didn't look much of a threat. And the first time that they looked like a threat, they considered a goal. Because, I mean, that, that corner is so good from uh, from Everton. The header is so good. It's also so good. You watch the header, it looks like it's going in, but it just hits the post and comes out. Now, from that point on, Everton have got to be smart. Like, I mean, you know, the shot that comes in, it gets deflected. I think after that Everton kind of thing, all right, we've got Liverpool and the ropes here. What do we do? And they just dwell a little bit, just a little bit they dwell. And suddenly desperation turns into opportunity for Liverpool because as soon as that ball evades Coleman, now it's out to the Nunez. Nunez is smart enough. And I thought Nunez had a good game today. And he was smart enough to go, right, I've got I've got the contract. I can I'm going to run. But what I liked about Liverpool was none of them sat back and went, oh, we just got away with it. No, they, they were four, there were five players, including Nunez, uh, five players steaming forward running ahead um you know not worrying about what has just happened they were running ahead to trying to get a goal i mean that is the classic counter attack isn't it you don't see goals scored that way often but when you do you just have to go and think oh my god what just happened here it's it's every or defending team's worst nightmare when a goal like that goes in it's just it is just unbelievable but the way they ran five of them it was it was like a steam train just running ahead and the newness picks out a good pass i thought pickford could have done better uh could have done a lot better actually because he just stood there in no man's land. I don't know what he was doing. And sometimes Pickford has this in him where he gets too excited, too over-enthusiastic. And I think he tried that here. If you keep in mind, if he, if he collects that ball, if, if Munez, gets, Munez gets that pass wrong and he collects it, he looks like a hero. But what, what happened actually, he looked pretty silly. Uh, and Salah just, you know, has, has a... I, you know, I, I, I think people will say it was not that easy, but I thought, you know, a player of Salah's quality has got to, got to score that goal from there. You know, open goal... Um, he's, he's got a net to aim at. It's not necessarily the kind of goal where he's going to have to strain or something. He's just got to make sure that he's getting on target. And yes, that is still harder than it looks, but it's a lot. it was made a lot more easier because Pickford came out. If Pickford hadn't come out, maybe on Salah's le a weaker foot, he might have had a chance. But uh, it, was, it was a good finish from Salah. It's 1-0 to Liverpool. And you just felt that that goal galvanized, galvanized Liverpool in a way. It just kind of gave energy back to the crowd. Because I felt that first 20 minutes, maybe Everton were a little bit lethargic. Maybe they were a little bit paranoid about what was happening to them. But once that goal went in, it just changed the complexion. Because it was such a Liverpool goal to score. It gave the entire crowd a lift. It gave the entire team a lift. Suddenly, they were doing much, much better. And as it happens, you know, you get a goal, you get excited, you get energized. And that's what happened. And um, the second goal came. I don't think it was that much of surprised that the second goal was going to come and was going to come for Liverpool. It just um, was something that was like looked inevitable ever since that first goal went in. And again, second goal counter-attack as well. Liverpool, and this is more classic counter attack because the first one was more desperation turn opportunity. This one was Liverpool at their best, where they where they press hard, they rang, you know, a, a player on the ball. Three players on Iwobi, by the way. There were three players around Iwobi. There's What was he supposed to do, right? And they just nicked the ball off him. Robertson comes away with the ball. He's running ahead, finds the pass, Trent you know, it's it's a good cross. Could Cody have tried to clear it? Maybe. But I think even if he had... I, I think the pace at which he was coming, this possibility was that he was going to put it in his own net. So he, he didn't have much of a choice. 
but it comes out to Gakpo and Gakpo scores for his first goal for Liverpool. He's had a tough time for it. I don't think he had a particularly great game today. I don't think. But I think this goal will give him a bit of confidence to go ahead and say, yeah, you know, maybe maybe here's something that I can work on. And he did look a little bit more confident, a little bit more, um, you know, in tune, uh, which happens, right? Once you score a goal, you're a striker, you get a goal, you feel more confident about yourself. Even if it's a tap-in goal, which it was, the fact is that you get it, it makes you feel that much more faith and that much more confident in yourself. And I think that's what happened. And Gakpo looked a lot better for it. Um, right, and then they went, I'm the only surprised the fact that they didn't score more. They had a couple of other breaks as well. There was a chance there. I think Salah could have scored towards the end, but I just could have picked him nicely. That could have been 3 0. Um, there was a chance for Tom Davis, which I think he should have done better with as well. Tom Davis could have made it 2 1 for Everton, could have made it interesting. That cross from it would be so good. But uh, you, you felt Liverpool deserved that win, and they did. And I think we talk got to talk about Bajetic. I thought he was fantastic today. He was ran that midfield. Um, and, and you know, he may, you may very well be Fabinho's successor uh, going forward because I thought he was really, really good. And we might now be starting to see the nucleus of a new Liverpool that is forming because Van Dijk hasn't played for a while. Um, you know, it was Matip and Gomez today. It seems like Gomez is going to be one of those guys going forward that Liverpool are going to rely on, at least for the rest of the season. It just looks like they're going to rely on him because I don't see... Him not, I see him pretty much playing. I mean, he sometimes plays with Matip, he sometimes plays with, um, uh, what's the other, I mean, with another defender, I forget the name, but uh, plays with a couple of defenders. But generally, he's the guy who starts always. So I'm assuming that he's the centerpiece now for that defense going forward. Rightly or wrongly, that's your opinion, and you can tell me what you think about that. But I just feel like he's the centerpiece for that. Um, and then uh, around him, uh, yes, uh, the other one, of course, uh, is uh, the, 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 the French guy, right? Um, God, I forgot his name again. Um, it just came to me and then I forgot about it. But you let me know in the comments, of course. Yeah, you know, you know, you, you, you Liverpool fans know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, I can do a Google search, but yeah. Um, the, the, the second person, the, um, yeah, his name just keeps escaping me. Um, anyway, right. So he, generally he plays and, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's a good way to, to move forward on, on that front for him. Um, as far as, uh, I mean, the midfield, I think Bajit is now, Bajit is, I think, has kind of established himself as well in that position. So I, I see him being there uh, as as one of the guys. Uh, and then like, they're rotating between the others. I still think they need a couple more components in midfield uh, because I think Fabinho and Henderson work today, but I don't think they can do it, uh, you know, twice a week now at this at this stage of their careers. So they'll need some enforcements there, but they seem like there's a new nucleus. And then you've got Nunez, you've got uh, Gakpo, uh, you've got um, uh, Jota, of course, still very young, so you still got him. So there is something there uh, to build on. So I, I think it's coming. And I think Liverpool Klopp probably is the right person to take it forward. I do think he's the right person. Uh, but the big test now will be Newcastle. That will be coming up. Uh, they beat Newcastle last time. The only team in the league to have done that, which is fantastic. But if they do it again, I think I think we can certainly safely say that Liverpool are back and they're back in that top four hunt. Because if you look at that gap, it looks like a lot. But there's a lot of teams that have played more games than them. So they might be ninth at the moment, but they have, played, they have games in hand on other teams. So it's not the gap is not that big of a margin that it looks like. And like I said... Newcastle have drawn five of the last six games. So, you know, they're kind of having trouble winning games. So, you start winning and Newcastle start losing. That will be a problem. Um, United, of course, look like they're... I mean, they, they, they always look like they're one injury or one bad game away from a drop uh, in form. So, you never know what you're going to get with them. So, there's still opportunities. There's still and, and, of course, Chelsea are there and Spurs are there. But I think Liverpool are still well enough placed. I, I still don't think that top four is a done deal yet or that Liverpool or Chelsea are out of it yet. Um, not yet. Maybe in a couple of weeks, you we might say that with some more bad results if it happens. But for now, I think they're still firmly in there. It just takes a couple of results to turn things around. Um, and Liverpool are relentless, of course. They are very, very relentless when it comes to, um, you know, getting results and, and you know, putting it on when, when the pressure is on, getting getting things done. So, we're still not there yet. Um, but the next game against Newcastle will tell us a lot about where Liverpool are and whether this is just a temper uh, false dawn, whether this is something new that could very well become uh, something big and something great again. So let, let's see what happens. Um, I, I wouldn't write off Klopp yet. I wouldn't write off Liverpool yet. I still feel there is a lot there um, uh, that, that they can do and we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And of course, there's Champions League games against Liverpool, against Real Madrid coming up as well. That would be a big one as well to look out for. So um, anyway, well done to Liverpool. I thought they played well. They played well today. It looked like the old Liverpool, as I said. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, the rest helped. And let's see if, if this momentum can continue now into the next game. Uh, let me know what you thought about the game. Of course, always happy to hear from you guys. Uh, do smash like if you enjoyed this video. And do share, do you know, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel on, on YouTube. Of course, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Appreciate your support. We're one follower shy of 100 on Facebook. So let's try and get there uh, today. So please just follow, uh, you know, smash like, follow on Facebook. And let's cross that milestone. Thank you so much for your support. Of course, take care. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.